cryptic shifter there. Hello, Ryan. Hello, Xander. How are you guys doing? All good. Yeah, man. Good to hear. How you, how you been? How you keeping? Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, the arms a bit uh, hard with the record coming out and stuff, but... Um, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, we've come practice for quite a long time, but we've been jamming now for probably more than a month. So it's like lockdown and didn't even happen anymore. Yeah. yeah. Have you got... Did you, like, when you came back, did you gel put it break back how it was before lockdown pretty quickly then? Yeah. I mean, it was good. I mean, me and Xander jammed before everyone else, but mm. yeah, they, they are quite surprised. I was expecting a little things to be a bit, a bit rocky, but um, yeah, to say we, we haven't played the album in, I don't know, two or three months together at least. It was uh, it was really easy. Mm. Yeah, Just fall back into it. Yeah. So how's it been? Yeah. Like obviously you guys have been getting a lot of success. I so saw you guys in Metal Hammer on like the top twenty yeah. albums this year. Like that must be pretty crazy to see your name up there with like some of the greats and stuff. How was that? It's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Like um, we kind of expected a lot of the records, so uh, it was like pretty humble to kind of like you know um receive the kind of reception that we aim to receive when yeah. we were like working on. It. It's pretty cool. I mean, we put a lot of time and effort into like making sure everything was perfect, at least like in our opinions and stuff. So it's yeah. pretty rewarding to kind of see it uh, be enjoyed as as much as we enjoy it and stuff. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, we tried to step up everything, really, every aspect of the band, whether it was the music to the business side and you know all the effort. And- to like time and power that we put into the record i really feel it's like come back to us in like yeah, in the, like all these publications which is which is really great is it like a bit surreal to see then like just being published everywhere uh, it just feels good man like um yeah i wouldn't say surreal because uh like like we, we put so much time into the record that we already determined that um when it was released it was going to be released right. like the best possible quality and stuff so um like i said before it's kind of like humble and stuff because it's like yeah this is really nice um it's more of like a proud feeling thing yeah it's yeah. more like yeah it's definitely more but like, like to our earlier selves like a few years ago that would have been like insane like when we first started jamming like i'd have been probably subscribing to Metal Hour back then, you know, and to and I used to read like every word and listen to every band on the CD and you know try and get into it. So to know that there's like young kids like we were that are now reading about us and hearing about us, that's that's the surreal part, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, uh, did you know the article coming out or like before? Was it like just you 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 got told like before it was like like a day before or something like that or was it literally just a complete surprise or well um we we had like a pretty extensive press run when the record was coming out and i believe it was before the release day um dom lawson from metal hammer had got in touch saying that he, he really enjoyed the record and yeah. um, he wanted to do each with us and stuff so mm-hmm. He sent us like a few questions over and stuff like that, and then me and Xander like answered them as possible, and then he took the best um, content from the responses, I suppose, and put together in the in the feature, which was pretty nice. Yeah. I mean, it's awesome. Like I said, like being in Melham is cool because on the same level as Xander, like I grew up reading that magazine and stuff, and I haven't necessarily read it myself in the last few years, but. Um, just to be in there as a UK band and stuff and getting such a, you know, uh, high praise from a publication like Metal Hammer, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's a really good feeling and stuff. And um, it just kind of shows to me that, yeah, the, the record has come out the way that we really wanted it to come out. And I think that's probably the more rewarding part about it, really. Just mm-hmm. kind of having that inner validation that everything's going good, you know? Yeah. It was it's much better than... You know, obviously not been featured in Metal Hammer, so. (laughs) What was, like, your favourite part of the new album then? Like, obviously, because you guys went into, like, a 25-minute song, which is, like, pretty 
pretty you know amazing to do like a 25 minute song like second album like how how was the process of doing that then uh what do you mean do you mean writing it or yeah just like writing it and like your favorite parts of doing it getting it finished was the best part of <laughs> <Yeah>. doing it <laughs> <laughs> like a weight off your shoulders it's like uh, yeah, absolutely. Like we spent like three years uh, putting it together and recording it and everything. So, you know, finally getting it finished and uh, working with Lord Harvest was probably my favorite part. But um, I, I guess I would say like just taking ourselves more seriously as like songwriters and uh, players. Um, uh, it was never necessarily like. We, we we never really sat down and determined that we were going to write a 25 minute long song it kind of just progressed that way naturally um and like i'm sure we'll get on the concept of the record a little later on or something but um that kind of like kept it cool because it didn't necessarily feel like it was just playing a 25 minute long song it was kind of like it's it's cool how um the songwriting and because the songwriting lines up with the, the concept story within the lyrics and stuff like that. So seeing how that um, unfolded was, was really cool. Yeah, um, writing it was kind of like a, a jigsaw puzzle, you know, and uh, and there's these like missing spots. When we were quite far into the like near completion, you know, there was a few missing spots, like jigsaw pieces. And, and it was just about find, finding the bits that like corresponded to the story. It was like, oh, we need to write a part that fit this dynamic of the story and you know to get the the end piece but like like you're saying it was it was good to finish it because at one it, point it felt like we were never gonna finish it yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, just, we just became content that the rest of our lives would be oh yeah just going to the studio a few times a week till like 7 a.m just just hacking at it and <laughs> it'll be all right i remember once we, we played london and uh i was driving back and we drove back on the night and it was just a long, long drive. It felt like forever. I remember thinking like, like no, three, three or four hours in, I was like, my whole life has been driving. I don't remember anything else. <laughs> and that is like, I had two or three years into like recording this album. So yeah. Well, it really does show in the album by yeah. the amount of work you put into it because like, I, I listened to it when it came out and I was actually, I was genuinely like blown away with how like well put together it was. Like it, every single element was so well like made. Like while listening to it going, oh like, fucking hell. Like it was, it was, a, it was such a good listen. Like honestly, like um, what I kind of want to ask you with it were, were there a lot of songs that you found that ended up on like the cutting room, room floor? Like when you were like writing it, did you find that when you were putting it together, you go, oh, that song doesn't fit anymore. We'll, we'll get rid of that. Or was it all just, you kind of had the basic idea of the album and then you just expanded on it all the time? Uh, no. Regarding Critic Shift, I don't want there to ever be any songs on the cutting floor. It's mm-hmm. all, like, the, the song titles are all, like, predetermined because of, like, the, the, the sci-fi story. So, you know, I, I was jotting down like lyric ideas and star ideas and like the track listing and stuff like years and years ago. So it, it was always the plan to have these group of songs together. So it was just like finding music for these four songs rather than trying to come up with a random song and then trying to fit it in. Mm. But yeah. in when we were putting together the songs, writing it, there were riffs that came and then they were like, oh, scrap that riff or, you know, riffs that weren't used or sections that had to be rearranged and stuff. But because we're going to be continuing this story over our next releases, and like I said, I'd, I'd been writing down track titles for years and, you know, there's, there's a bunch of track titles that I've had for the same amount as these and they've already got little bits of music written. so. I guess when we decided that we'd be doing Visitations from Enceladus, which was these four set of songs, you know, the, the other tracks that were, like, already predetermined sort of got pushed to the side. Mm. Right. Yeah. 
So, like, what about the concept then? So, you said that you wanted to delve more into that. So, uh, what's the what's the big story then with this one? Do you want the big story or the condensed big story? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big question. Yeah, we've got time. Give us yeah. the big story, man. <laughs> Do you have any uh, favourite part of a certain song or a favourite lyric? And maybe I could delve like really specifically into that element. Well, I really liked the Arctic Chasm, so explain that one to me. All right, so that's the front cover of the album, you know, with the guy in the red. Yeah. Or, uh, um, that image depicts a part of that song. So. The Arctic Chasm opens, and our main character is in this other realm, this this weird like um, dimension called, and we called it Ras Kazu. Yeah. She's there to obtain these items called the Urns of Orak, sort of like a video game. You know, when you can't progress to a, a next level, or you can't defeat a boss without going to this place to search for this item, which will like yeah. power you up. I think it sort of comes from that that sort of progression. So uh, he's been trying for years and years to conjure this this gateway where where like the final boss sort of is, but he's unable to do so. So to conjure the gateway, he needs to uh, portal to this realm of Raskazu, in which he needs to find this. This temple called Upshukinaku, which is the that black obelisk in the distance you see on the, yeah. on the cover, and uh, he tries multiple times, but he can't seem to last long enough in in this realm without being like pulled out of it. He's like he's like mind and body are pulled back out to the real world. So eventually, he's he's kind of like a not a magician, but like some sort of like Jedi sorcerer kind of guy. Mm. And he's working away in his Arctic chasm base. And eventually he manages to enter Raskazu with like 100% form. He's able to remain there for a long enough time for him to get into Upshukinaku um, and then find these urns of Orak, which are beneath the temple in these like labyrinthine uh, corridors. So. Uh, that's the first half of the Arctic Chasm. You know, he's arriving there, he's wading through the water, he finds a temple, yeah. he goes in, and it's uh, Upshukinaku is like the council chamber of the ancient ancient ones. He goes beneath, he finds his urns, and he sort of teleports back out to the real world, and he's, he's got these items, and with them, he has like more power to summon this gateway, which will lead to the area where the main adversary is. So he punches his gateway and, and he flies up in his ship and it ends just as he's standing in front of this sort of like bubbly membrane of sorts and that's where planetary hypnosis starts as he walks through. That, that's, that's, actually, so, that's so Yeah, cool. so vivid, isn't it? Yeah, like, what were you like playing or like watching? Like, Did you get any like inspiration from any like TV shows, movies or games then for that? Because alignment, like you said, it, it does sound like with a, you know, a final boss you need a certain item, so... What was the inspiration behind well, this song anyway? Um, inspiration specifically for the Arctic Chasm story-wise, uh, I don't know really. Um, probably just playing that many video games, all just combining. Mm. The, you know, yeah. With the the the, the end game. Yeah, there's, there's, there is a little bit of blood, uh, blood, Bloodborne. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I would say I have like an, an yeah, array of these that. ancient gods in the law, in the mythos. Uh, so we've we've got like a set of like ancient gods and stuff that are, are, are like god of god of incantations and god of gateways and stuff like that. Um, but I think Moonbelt was the first thing to come into my mind regarding like the story and the environments and then then it was just a case of like thinking of what to go next and it just stemmed from the moon belt thing and somehow we came across the fact that this guy needs to go to some place called Upshukinaku to get some you know yeah cool have you ever uh, thought like doing a oh go on 
uh, visuals are really important, I think, as well. So, you know, the front artwork, like, really describes this place called, you know, in the Arctic chasm. And as you were saying, me describing that, did it conjure up some more images in your head of what might be going on in the story? Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. You know, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just think of it. Oh, I'll, I'll, that's so cool. Have you ever thought about doing like, you know, if you do like a music video or like that, shooting like the story of that as it goes along? Have you ever thought about doing that? We would really like to, if we had like a few grand to hire some. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as I was saying, that, I was thinking that's going to cost a lot, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like you've got a good grasp of like making a TV show along with the album, to be honest. Like, yeah. It's, it's, uh, like well thought out and vivid, like even just for an album. Yeah, like normally, when, obviously, when you ask bands out, like, what was the inspiration? They, they just kind of go, "Oh, it's about this." But like it, the fact that you that song has like a full story to it, and that's just one song from the album as well. That's so interesting and so cool. Like as a concept to even think about, like the fact that every song has a like a little story to it. It's fucking sick. That, that is, man. <laughs> that, honestly, that's fucking sick. <laughs> A lot of bands have these like cheesy concepts, like, oh, what's your album about? Oh, it's about me breaking up with my girlfriend, and yeah. oh, just even, like boring, shitty ideas. So, so the, the fact that there weren't any good ideas out there, I think, you know, the interest in like sci fi adventure stories, yeah, I'm like, that motivated me, I think, to want to create this. Mm. That, no, yeah, that's, definitely, that's so cool, like, as well. It, like, I, I think with you, like what really strikes me is your imagery and the consistency and the theme that you've got like a lot of bands will start a theme and they never really stick to it whereas on social media and everything user are consistent with that like how did the the whole sci-fi theme actually start for you it's like was it a uh, sort of like a vision straight away or did it kind of come later on yeah uh... That was pretty natural just through um, myself and Xander's bond in like just enjoying sci fi in general. Uh, we both grew up with, like Star Wars brats. Mm. So um, I still to this day would consider myself a Star Wars brat. So um, just like <laughs> other than enjoying stuff like, you know, extreme music and stuff like that, um, we kind of just get on because we like sci fi movies. So. <laughs> There, there was, it wasn't necessarily like something that we decided to do. It was kind of just more natural. Like, yeah. like Xander said before, um, it would probably be really hard for us to put a, a, a record together with some sort of like moral like outlook or <laughs> political or personal. For us, it's just like, no, nah, let's let's make music about sci-fi and stuff because sci-fi is awesome and you know yeah, exactly. every sci-fi movie is different and stuff like that and you know there's there's no like limitation to what you can create really you know no definitely because that's, that's, because we can like keep going and like you know cook up like concept ideas about basically anything you know and um, that translates up to music if you've got this wild sci-fi theme that where you can create anything, it kind of makes it like you can do all with the music as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like that's what, that's that's pretty in there with the a lot of stuff on Moonbelt Immolator. There's a lot of moments that sonically um, represent, you know, sound effects that we wanted to, you know, put together organically rather than having a sample or uh, relying on like keyboards and stuff like that because none of us play keyboards. So. You know, like how 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 can we make uh, a drum kit and a couple of guitars um, sound like a ship is crashing down on the planet? You know, and stuff like that. So that was like really fun to do as well, because you know, sci-fi is awesome and it's always going to be awesome because the future is never going to arrive. So <laughs> true. I feel like political stuff and you know songs about dragons and like you know there's like. Sometimes it can be interesting, but I feel like it's like beating a dead horse. Like it's always been in metal, you know what I mean, from the beginning. Like bands are still doing it, but to actually, like you said, with sci fi, it is never ending and there's so many different concepts you can play around with. Like it always feels fresh when yeah. people do it. It's like when, when I think when bands go political, like there's only so much that you can say that, has, that hasn't already been said. 
And I think yeah. with views, you, that's I think that's why it's it's so like interesting. But like for me, like how you a, a band come across because it's you haven't put yourself in like a box. You literally do have like the the sky's literally the limit for you. Um, and I do think that's like nice pun there. It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, nice pun. Um, but yeah, honestly, I I I fucking love the new album. And knowing that yeah. like that that part about it as well like, even makes it better for me. Um, yeah. So what I was thinking. Yeah. Um, that's we definitely appreciate that, and that's like one of the main things that we wanted listeners to really get involved with was like the imagery and the story, and you know, linking it with the music yeah. and everything that way. Yeah, like we're the we're like the biggest sci-fi nerds ever, and we kind of wrote this record for the nerds. So it's like you know, yeah, that, that's like starting the album with a twenty-five minute song. You know, you know, if if you can't get past that, then you know, if that doesn't yeah. interest you and excite yeah. you, you know. Then, but it's 25 it's, minutes, yeah. but like, it's there's so much happening in the song that it's like listening to seven different songs at the same time, yeah. but it's still consistent with each other. And like you said, with all these different sounds you incorporate, like it just, it sort of whisks you away a bit. Like you feel really immersed. It's almost like you've got VR goggles on or something. So it kind of carries it with it. Yeah. It, it literally is like, when you listen to it, it is literally, it, it's, it's, I've never heard anything like it. Like yeah. I've listened, I listened to it and I was like, it's like it's next level why like, it genuinely it does feed your imagination with it and why like, it just genuinely it don't like you haven't heard anything like it no, at all like you, not. you listen to it and you go there's no other band doing anything like this so honestly you did a fucking cracking job with the fucking new album honestly yeah. and you, you can proper see like the actual labor of love that you put into it like come across um with with that being said uh, is there anything in the works like Slime Lord or all, like for side projects and that? Uh, we've just finished recording the next Slime Lord EP. Really? So that, that'll be out before end of year, definitely. Uh, we actually recorded it back in February or March, but... Yeah, it was just before lockdown, right? It was just before lockdown and, you know, we've been rehearsing lots to do it and then... And then we had, we, we we had a go at it and it, it wasn't quite right. So we were gonna do it like in the next few weeks again, you know, to get it really tight again. And then yeah. lockdown happened, so couldn't do it. But I mean, I suppose like you said, good. like having three years of doing the album, like you know, finally getting the weight off your shoulders. I'm sure you guys appreciated a bit of a break in between, mm. you know, doing Slime Lord as well. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. But how did, how did so you- yeah. Lockdown has like been lifted a little bit. We've just been recording the new Slime Lord EP, and uh, yeah, Cedar Doom will do it in Europe, and um, we're on Sewer Rock, Sewer Rock, Sewer Rock yeah. Records in uh, California. Are going to be releasing. That's going to be sweet. Yeah, that, that does sound sweet. Have you got any like plans for gigs in 2021? Then um, there's a a lot in talks with Cryptic right now just about like worldwide touring and stuff like that um because the record's done pretty well everywhere to be honest um well i guess no one really knows what's happening right now so yeah planning stuff is confirmed is like really like like walking on thin ice right now you know so we're not necessarily um trying too hard to uh accomplished anything on that front we're just kind of going to wait until things do go back to normal hopefully that's yeah. sooner rather than later it's going to take however long it's going to take right so um i mean once there is some stuff that's planned for may may next year is kind of like the earliest uh, we've got planned i think that's a pretty realistic um yeah time so. for things. Well, that's so, what i was going to ask so. that's what i was going to ask you guys actually because obviously you're quite endowed in the music industry. Like, I wanted to know, like, do you know anything about what's happening with gigs reopening or anything? Like, has there been any talk within venues reopening or what? I mean, it'll be spring next year. Yeah, spring. It's, it's, I, 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 think, That's I, I personally don't think here in the UK anything for March next year um, is looking likely. I mean, they might they might try it before then, but. 
I don't know. I'm I'm fully anticipating a second lockdown around winter time. So I, I don't think that's gonna fade away until like at least March next year. So no, you're probably right. I can't worry slightly like falling. <laughs> 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 Sorry about it. Yeah, like it, it's such a weird time at the minute, like because we oh, we've got ingested in in December, aren't we? Yeah, but I, but but I, I don't. Think... I don't have, I, I'm thinking that's gonna get cancelled, like because yeah. I think that it's just it's hard to nail anything down because it's all just no one knows how to deal with it. Like at the minute, like did you find in like lockdown was anything that like you tried working on in lockdown or? anything like that, how did you adjust to it because I, I i know from experience like for bands it it really yeah. hard like with my band i tried doing we tried doing skype fucking practices that didn't work out so how did you approach it did you just kind of wait until it were lifted or um i mean i thought it was pretty sick because just didn't have to open chilled it up yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were all in- that was my mind as well yeah you know, the new Call of Duty was on. We were playing that, like, every day back in March. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was, it was kind of nice. To, uh, sorry. It was, like, kind of nice to uh, do nothing after, like, doing stuff all the time for so many years. And the record was coming out. I mean, the record came out in, like, May. Um, when did lockdown start? Like, March. Right. Us so yeah. we kind of had that to look forward to. And then... After that, there was a lot of, like, interviews and stuff that needed to be done. So we had, like, loads of time to, to be working on that, which was awesome. Um, it, it sure as hell was easier than doing it than if we'd had to do it whilst going to work or Tours. in between touring and stuff like that. So right. uh, it was cool. I mean, everyone was, like, at home. Like, everyone in the world was at home. So when the record came out, I don't know. I don't know if it would have been any different if the record hadn't come out during lockdown. Um, if lockdown but, happened now and it had come out in May, you know, a lot of records that have been coming out probably wouldn't have got much attention because everyone, everyone was busy, right? Everyone's busy, you know, but yeah, luckily well, yeah. everyone was at home. Yeah. No, absolutely. No, I mean, I had the same sort of thing. Like, I, I did kind of enjoy lockdown in a way. I got more time to sort of do things that I felt like I was too busy to do before because I've been working at um, since like March time, so you know, I've just been playing PS4, got to catch up on Last of Us 2, play Ghost of Tsushima, so I can't really complain. And then, like, also just doing other stuff that I like I said, I wouldn't have had time to do if it wasn't for lockdown. So it's been a, a gift and a curse at the I, same time. I found that I started like picking up like random hobbies, like, I'd switch out hobbies like every other week. Like, I, the only thing that I've stuck to is I've been, try, I've been trying to learn guitar. But fuck, honestly, my fingers are so fat and slow. I, I can only play like proper slow shit riffs. I could just sit there like, oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> like for ages. Um, you can start a doom band if you can only play slow. Hmm? That doom band if you can only play slow for now. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, yeah, I've, I've might have yeah, like, seems to pick your genre. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I bought a, I bought a nice little Jackson, and I've I've been I, in lockdown. I was practicing solidly five hours like a day, doing metronome training and lot to try because I, I I'm impatient as fuck. Like, so I want I, I want to get good, and I want to get good now. Yeah. So I've actually thought of a better question. Um, I need to have the rounds come back. Oh. <laughs> there you go. I actually thought about a better question. So like now with, with with the position you're in where you're already you're already pretty established and you're doing well, um, what advice would you actually give to people starting out, like just starting bands? Like what would you actually say is like top tier most important um, advice to give? Yeah, because Nerf wants to know, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> this is just for himself. <laughs> don't spend more than enough time playing. Uh, the same places uh, especially like your hometown and stuff because mm. once you start like getting out and about um, people kind of see you a bit differently I mean because we, we we've been playing together in like bands uh, within Leeds for quite a while um, but that's because it took time to kind of like network and meet bands that wanted us to go play other cities and stuff like that 
once we got like touring and you know being able to go and travel to play shows that's when things get very different because um like leeds is probably one of my least favorite places to play um i we've got like um, a much greater following in like especially in london um scotland uh, even like Manchester and even even York to some extent yeah, yeah. Uh, is a little bit better than Leeds and stuff. I don't know if that's changed now because of the record because obviously we haven't played live so there's no way real way to kind of gauge um, how how different things are now. But um, for bands that are like starting out, you know, get get good and get tight and just just have fun. Like try not to take yourselves too seriously. Um, because I think a lot of bands do that and it's very apparent. But for us, like talking just from experience, um, just playing different places and going and traveling six hours there and back to go play a show in London to just to get like 20, 20 quid payment, you know, and just meet people and, you know. Um, yeah, it's about meeting people really and just experiencing things. It's important. You know, the saying it's it's all about who you know, and it kind kind of is because you know the more you play out of your own town, you know, more the more that you go on like shitty weekenders, and you can barely afford the van. You know, it's just about meeting people in different places. And, yeah, yeah, and like it's just about like just enjoy yourself and try not to think too much of it because like if if you become too um, if you become too obsessive about the idea of becoming popular and stuff like that, it's probably never going to work because you're probably going to quit um, before you get. I think you guys have cut off. Good. Oh, there you are. You're yeah, back yeah, now. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, you cut off. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah um, like before the record came out, we were doing pretty good. Um, but uh like one, once the record was released and um you know we've been getting like attention and, and messages and like new fans from like all over the world and stuff like that um it, it kind of came out of nowhere so it, it's pretty weird just to consider that you know when, once the album was released things really did suddenly change as if overnight um, considering the position that we were in at, the, at that one point before then. So just, you know, persevere and have fun and um, really, like, I don't want to say, like, believe you're the best of all time, but believe you're the best of all time. I mean, like, don't, just by that, I mean, like, don't compromise yourself, you know? Yeah, and we really like Megadeth, especially, like, the Rust in Peace era. Mm-hmm. And you have to think, you know, if you if you were Dave Mustaine in nineteen ninety, you know, do you think Dave Mustaine thought, Oh, this record's all right, you know, we might yeah, be all right. He you know, thought he was the best in the world. He was. <laughs> he, was you know? he was the best in the world, but uh, no, absolutely, man. Just have fun, be good, um, meet people. Um, play some really bad shows in foreign countries in front of two people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you should put attention into that every aspect as well. You know, it's not just about writing the good songs. You know, and like you were saying, now we presented ourselves on social media. You know, you picked up on that. It was all sci-fi themed, and you know, you, you do kind of need to put attention into that. You know. And, even when you're like emailing people and down from writing songs down to your your appearance online, you know, and even like artwork for your releases and and like even like the track listing and you know just thinking over everything, the song titles, you know, just put put effort into every aspect. Yeah, I think like because. Some bands might put effort into the artwork or some bands might put effort into the songwriting, but I think it's good, like you said, to be across the board, like put every bit of attention to detail into every element that goes into it. But like, and also just, you know, don't take yourself too serious at the same time. Like it's definitely a balance of everything, isn't it really? And especially what you said about the networking as well, because, 
you know, there's some bands that, you know, they'll, they'll play the hometown, they'll get like, they'll get like a fan base and they'll think, oh, shit, I'm growing here. But then if you don't branch out, you know, you, you always have the same fans and you might stick to that same sort of fan base. So. Yeah, it's like I've seen bands that have been really, like, really fucking good, but because they haven't networked, they've always stayed as that, oh, well, when there's a gig on in Leeds, we'll put yous on. But then, but they'd never expanded out of it and they'd never networked and never sp- spoke to anyone. So they sit there and like, I wonder why we're not getting gigs down in London. I wonder why we're not get, getting gigs elsewhere. So I think like, yeah. what you said. Yeah, we get known as the band that always gets put on like the, the lead show or whatever. You know, and if you build up a, a big fan base in your own hometown and that's it, as soon as you get a gig in like the next town over, you'll be thinking like, oh yeah, where, where's sick, where massive? And then you turn up and it, it's not as how you expect. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've seen it countless times where like, you go, you you go, and like there'll be like two people in the room, and then the, it, I find that 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 then that because they've had such a big following in their hometown, it like crushes them, they'll, they'll crush them, and yeah. then they throw them off, and then the show's a bit like not as good as it would be normally because they're like, why is there only two people? What? Why isn't there more? Why why is there only two people watching it? You, like, like, you got like players if you're playing Wembley. Yeah, like, I feel like even a, if there's two people, I, I guess. feel like a lot of bands expect there to be an like a big audience straight away when they don't like I don't everyone I think everyone a lot of people underestimate it. Sometimes you'll do a gig and there might just be you on stage like Yeah. But you just keep grinding, don't you? Yeah, you just gotta keep grinding. I think you are the perfect example of that because like the first experience, like the first sort of time I ever, like, I heard of you was when you did the suffocation gig, and from where you were then to where you are now, and in such a short space of time, is it's really actually impressive, like because everything's consistent, everything's you've nailed everything, like it's almost like if there was a book on how to get big, you've have like hit every point, like everything is like so good, like. From when I saw you at Suffocation, I was like, these guys are fucking, they're going to go somewhere. And like, seeing it happen before my eyes, I was like, oh, mint. and then the minute I saw you in Metal Hammer, I was like, I will gas for you because I was like, that's fucking mint. Like, that's what I thought. That's that right. was the attention you deserved from the start, like the start off. So it was, I think it was very like, well earned. Like, yeah. I was there like that. I'm happy to see that. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, Good to see it pay off. Yeah. It's good to see why like, all your hard work pay off. The, the funny thing is, um, that, um, at that suffocation show, without a doubt, we probably played uh, the three shorter tracks from the <laughs> from the record. Really? <laughs> yeah. it came out a couple of months ago. So, <laughs> I mean, nah, sweet man. Like, like you said, it's just about the like consistency and stuff like that, and. Um, you know, believing in yourself, believing like, believing like uh, the best possible outcome, but whilst being realistic, you know, mm. it's not like we'd have been able to catch a deal off of like Nuclear Blast or someone like that at this point. And there was no point really getting caught up thinking that we could, uh, just because like, you know, we, we're, we're a brand new band and stuff like that. But, you know, um, like you said, um, it was rewarding for us again, just to be in like Melhammer and stuff like that. Cause you know, we've, we've been doing, we've been playing a band together now, what, like six years. And considering where it was at the start, where it is now, it's like, yeah, it's awesome. I wish we could have done it a lot quicker if we did on how. <laughs> yeah. Well, if we'd have tried to do it sooner, maybe, maybe it wouldn't have worked. You know, you need, you do kind of need that grind. You know? mm-hmm. Like uh, with Slime Lord and stuff, um, we've kind of like, Slime Lord does pretty good, you know, we're on like a, a European label and an American label and stuff, and we've been fortunate enough to like play shows with like Two Malls and Black Witchery, and um, been able to play outside of Leeds more than within Leeds in, we've only been a band for like a year and a half and stuff, and I think that just came from uh, the the lessons me and you have learned over the years and stuff like that. So yeah. it was pretty cool to start a new band and not have to sit there for four or five years um, waiting for those good shows to come and stuff like that. But it's sweet, just, yeah, it's cool. I guess it's just having that um, reputation and stuff like that. Yeah, just already having the experience, so you know what 
mistakes that you know, he could make and how to avoid them. Uh, a lot, a lot of big bands might have previously been in a band that they were, they were in the band for like five, six years, and it didn't work out. But then the new band, like you know, they can, they can uh, make it work a lot easier because they've got the experience. But with Cryptic, we've yeah. just stuck at it. Absolutely. So I guess we have to talk to you guys about aliens at some point, don't we? So, what's your favorite UFO stories? Like, have you have you had any recent ones, um, or have you just got like a personal favorite? Um, I remember the previous interview we did. Yeah, that's um, what I mean. And then the next two hours about aliens. So yeah, this one's a bit more. Yeah, we have to get into the juicy yeah. stuff. Um. I'm the one to talk now. Um, pick a number between one and four. Two. Yeah, we're we'll going to. Okay. Um, so one night uh, I was at home and um, I came into my parents' room. I was maybe like 11, 12. And my dad was still at the window and he was like, I was like, what are you doing? And he was like, I'm just looking at this light. And it was like, what? The... so I went over because obviously I'm intrigued. And there was this like uh, red light just hovering. I, I live in an area which is like surrounded by fields and um, woodland and stuff like that. And there was this like in the background, there was just like in the, you know, the skylines, like kind of the edge of the woods and stuff. So a bit above that, there was this like red orb in the sky. Uh, me and my dad was watching that for maybe like, 10 minutes just trying to figure out what it was um because it was literally just a red orb just sat there and then it just shot off so that's that's my contribution <laughs> to the to the question that's quite compelling um, to be fair four encounters that i've had with witnessing the unexplained see i'm so pissed um, off because i've never seen a ufo before like unless it's completely just gone out of my mind but i'm really just envious of people that have had UFO experiences like it's Ooh. never happened to me I've had the exact same experience as Ryan I right. had, well at the last interview I didn't have any experiences but since then so at the beginning met with Ryan. bang on at the beginning <laughs> of the lockdown um, I, can't, I went out for a SIG and I was just you know when you're just like looking at the stars you, cause, just because you, you know you want to pass the time I, like, I looked up and I was like hey fucking minute is that start moving? And it was literally, a, it was just a bright ass light. And it, it said be there, you'd blink and it'd be like down there. And you'd blink again, it'd be there. It, it was just, it was moving about. And I was like, right, hang on. Right, I thought I drank today or something. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a fucking sober. And I, first thing I did, I, I messaged Brad, like, Brad. There's a fuck. I can see a fucking UFO, and Brad, Brad, like, like, piss off. No, you can't. I, was like, I swear to fucking God, there is. And ever since then, yeah, I've seen it four times, like in the same place at the same to- time, all the time. It's always at seven o'clock. And last time I saw it, there was three of them, three lights that sort of just went like that with each other. And then you blink, gone. I'll be watching you. On it, I, was, I, was, I, I remember Ready just watching, probing. like, cacking it, because I was like, all right, there's three of them now. Is this, like, a sign? <laughs> like, I'm fucking cacking it. I was thinking, am I going to get, like, abducted or something? <laughs> Interesting that you see it, uh, like, reoccurring times. Yeah. Well, I, I literally, I was like, every t- the first time I saw it, I didn't really think of the time. Second time I saw it, I was like, right, this is too much of a coincidence. So I was like, right, seven o'clock. Third time, it's always in like a consecutive space of like maybe like a month or so. So like between each other, and I like every so often I look up, I see it, and I'm like, nah, like, and I'm not the only person that saw it. Like, I live with my parents. <laughs> I shout at me more like, mum, there's a fucking UFO. Come see this, just so I'm not going crazy because and she's convinced it was a satellite. But I was like, satellites don't fucking move like that. We wouldn't be able to see it. Like <laughs> honestly, it, it was easy. It well, it was just it was mental. Like I said, I said to her, like, look, like that one, it, that 
that I'm not saying I was like she's like it's definitely not aliens and I'm like we don't fucking know why like, it's just a light that we're moving and we know it were moving and like honestly ever since then I it proper it's changed my outlook on on like aliens and everything because I did believe they existed but I was like maybe maybe they have come here but I don't think I'd ever see it I'd ever see it personally but after see after seeing that, like, I was I was sat there proper spooked for like ages because I like I've literally just had like a life changing experience. Like, it was, honest, it was it's burned into my memory. Like, it was one of those where it's, it was ter- like it was terrifying <laughs> but sick at the same time. Like, honestly, it was like it was genuinely like one of the best experiences of my life. Probably because so, like so jealous, I've man. seen a fucking UFO. Like. Uh, what about you, Xander? Have you got any stories? No, I, I don't think so. I don't think I've seen them. It will happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's about Star Wars. <laughs> oh, yeah. This guy's still... Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen a UFO. Um, no, not like super weird in the sky. Disappointing. <laughs> the weirdest thing is, so I'm disappointed as well. I've never seen anything. Yeah. You, you know what? Next time, it, next time it comes up, I might try to film it because like last time I couldn't get it at all. It won't. I couldn't get it on camera, so I might actually bang out my ca- like actual camera and just like sit there, <laughs> see if I can fucking record it. No, you should. It, it's it, it's so eerie. Like you are blinking, it's just gone, and you're like, the fuck. <laughs> hmm. Telescope and have a close look. Well, I'm contemplating yeah, it because, like, where my window is in my room, it's the exact place where it is normally. So I'm actually so tempted just to get a telescope. Well, yeah, because if you use the camera, like, the lens isn't really going to zoom far enough, so it's going to be clear. Mm. Like, if you get a telescope, you can zoom in a bit further, unless you've got like a massive lens, but you don't. Yeah, I don't. I it goes like it goes like as far as that, that <laughs> softbox light, so I don't think it'll work properly. Yeah, well. I've got I've got a good little bit of a, a funny question for you. Right, we obviously all know everyone here. We all like metal, yeah. But is there any like guilty pre- pleasures that you like in terms of music that isn't metal? Um, I don't feel guilty about it, but I enjoy like a lot of Japanese pop music. That's pretty fun. Really? There's something yeah. about it. Why? I mean. I like it. I like I like watching anime and stuff. So I think it kind of comes from just the, the theme songs. Have you uh, watched stuff Food like Wars? That. What's that? Have you watched Food Wars? The, the I've seen a bit. Of, I haven't watched too much. Fucking of it, crazy. John's really in the Food Wars. My, my little brother watching that because he's in, he's getting into anime and I, and I saw him watch a bit of it. And I was like, what the fuck are you watching, man? <laughs> it was like a few yeah, years ago. I have to turn it, was, it down. There's some. I know, there's some girl was eating a biscuit or something, and then all of a sudden it, it went <laughs> up or something. I don't know. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> food for these girls, and then if they really like it, they have like an orgasm. So when I'm watching it, I have to like turn it down on mute. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is like the first time I've ever heard of this shit. What? It's called Food Wars. Yeah. I might actually have to try it. You should. That. <laughs> just make sure this make sure like you either watch it with headphones or you just turn it down to a point. Oh no, I've got no shame. I'll put it on full blast. <laughs> Alright, well it's your, it's your fucking funeral then. <laughs> yeah, I've got fucking I watched like a documentary on porn the other day and like <laughs> I'm in the living room and my mum came and shot, what the fuck are you watching? I was like, it's interesting, don't worry. <laughs> it's purely factual. <laughs> Alright, fuck it. Honestly, that's actually a real show. Yeah? Fuck. I can't actually believe that's a show. <laughs> I don't know why you're surprised it's anime. <laughs> Honestly. <Nah. laughs> what's your what's your favourite anime then? What would you say is your favourite anime? Uh I don't necessarily have too many favourites. I've been watching like um uh Sword Art Online recently. Oh yeah, that's good. That's 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 that's, that's that. I mean a lot of the ones I watch, I, I don't really have too much time to watch television at the minute. So, like, I'm trying my best to stay away from things that are too time consuming because I kind of get like, like, if I'm going to watch something, I'll sit there for like 20 hours straight and just watch it because yeah, I want to get it done. Um, 
So uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to like stay away from like series and stuff like that for a minute um, until I've got a bit more time because I'll just get disappointed with myself for not for not watching this. <laughs> but um, decent. I mean, well, I was gonna say Star Wars Clone Wars is a bit of an anime, but oh yeah, you should get into that. Uh, yeah, I, I should, should, but for the same reasons, I can't because <laughs> I'll get upset. I can't watch it all in the space of an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say, have you seen the new season? I've seen the new season. It's phenomenal. I I binged it. It's so fucking good. Like I was, I was just, I sat there all day, and like, oh, yeah, the quality is really it's waited a few years since the last did it. So the technology is better than that. And yeah, yeah, it's really fucking good. Have How it links like... with uh, Sixty Six, the Revenge of the Sith. It's just great. Oh yeah. Have you seen like how they did it? Oh, have you seen like the p- behind the scenes? They kind of switched from um, they switched from doing just you know like hand drawn and stuff like that and like computer animation to doing full like they did like motion capture work for a lot of a lot of the scenes. Like if you watch oh. it, um, they 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 got a lot of the original actors back to do motion capture for them, so it fit better with how the you know Revenge of the Sith went on. Do you know what I mean? I it, it, honestly, I, I watched them behind the scenes. It's actually really fucking interesting how they did it. That's nice. Yeah, I've spent a lot of hours watching all the behind the scenes of like the prequels and Star Wars and that. They're mm. good fun. Yeah. Have you seen the yeah. new Star Wars? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, right. I I proponed a rant about that. What did you think to the ending? Uh, yeah. uh, what Rise of Skywalker yeah, yeah, yeah. with Palpatine? I should break the lightsaber. Yeah, yeah, Kylo yeah, yeah, died. Yeah, kind of, kind of died. Uh, bad ending. Oh, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I sat, I fucking, I sat watching it. I got, I waited until it came out on Disney Plus, and I, I watched it, and I was like, oh fuck it, oh, that's that was shit. <laughs> I was fuming. I see them all in the cinema, obviously, midnight screening, because oh, yeah. I'm, you know, of course. And uh, yeah. okay. well, I don't want to get too into it because we, we could be ranting here forever. But I'll give you my brief opinion. You know, episode seven was really safe. It was like, all right, yeah, it was a bit too friendly, too safe, you know. But yeah, fair enough. It was all right. It was good. Um, Last Jedi is total abomination. Total shit. They really messed it up. I don't know why they just handed it to that Ryan Johnson guy, like, oh, yeah, do what you want. You can write it as well. So that's really sad. But uh, The Rise of Skywalker, I think, really redeemed it, and I, I did really enjoy that one. Mm. But I, I can't count him in, in the Star Wars, in like the real Star Wars mythos, because it's not George Lucas. He threw his scripts away. Yeah, I agree on that. So, you know, if it's not big George, then... Is he going back to help in the last one? Yeah, yeah. They were, they were... I, I kind of count episode seven, eight, nine as uh, you know before Disney had it, there was all the expanded universe. I just I just see it as oh, this is what could have happened, but it didn't happen. I yeah. felt like the same. Like I hate it when something gets butchered. That's like so classic and so great. Like when they released a new Predator film, like I watched it and it was just such a different approach. And I just like. I was almost like gobsmacked when I came out because I couldn't believe what they've done with it. Like they tried to turn it into almost a bit of a comedy. Well, that that new Predator film, to be fair, I thought it was good, but I did watch it like proper shit first. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I was case. watching it like proper shit. Like, like this is mint. This. It's all right. I mean, it was a bit goofy and comedy, but it was all right, you know. It wasn't the worst. I did really enjoy Predator. You want to say? You see Predators from like 2012. Oh, yeah, yeah, I really, I really like that one. I like that yeah, one. I actually prefer that one more than Predator 2, to be honest. Like, it's got quite a decent cast as well. Yeah, I'd, have you seen the new Terminator? That's fuck it. I like that one. I like that Terminator film. I haven't, to be honest. It's fuck it. I, really did see, I did see Genesis. I really enjoyed that. But I don't know why I've not seen the new one. The new, the new ones actually like. The, you know the one in in between the the mo- like the new one and you're the one where they they spoiled basically spoiled the film in the trailer where it literally like they fucking gave away the biggest plot point 
the that one's not that good, but the the newest one redeems it. Is by, that one with Amelia Clark in it? Yeah, it, it's the it's the one where it's they're basically I brought back. I like that one. Hmm? That's Genesis. I like that one. Yeah. Who fuck it? No one was it. Genesis. I I really did actually enjoy Genesis. Yeah, I think besides the original three, I haven't really branched out into any of the new ones that they've done. No, nah, the new one, uh, I watched the behind the scenes and how they did it. Um, fucking really good. Anyway, so back to the music, back to the music. What are your main influences? Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Star Wars, straight up. Um, probably, that's, that's probably actually... Uh, the biggest maybe yeah I think Star Wars motivates both of us in every aspect of life yeah <laughs> yeah what about like band wise um absolutely Voivod um Voivod kind of kind of, I guess they, they paved the way for just um being weird one of the first to just to be weird and creative and sci-fi and stuff and that's that's real sweet I mean, uh, you can say the same for Oblivion as well. They're a band uh, from Canada, and uh, they're, they're pretty out there. Um, yeah, Vector as well. Yeah, Vector are cool. Um, Garbutz, Obscura, definitely became more of an influence with this record. Yeah. Uh, that, that album is incredibly strange, and um, I'd love to be a part of something similar when it comes to just being so creative and uh yeah, yeah the coming up with like that mindset for that record is it's really like surreal to imagine it and that's kind of something we want to like tap into a bit you know just because they were so focused and so like forward thinking on that and as well all the weird guitar techniques i'm, I'm really into all that really really into all that just trying to make it sounds with the guitar that aren't really conventional and a lot of bands that do it unfortunately there's like a lot of like dissonant death metal like august copycats these days which is cool because you know it's a cool sound but bands that really like mess about with their instrument is really cool um ad nauseum they're from italy they're they're like the best Gorgos obscure worship kind of band i've heard and there's right. a new band that I've discovered recently called Embryonic Death. Mm. They're back from early 90s, and they were like a simple death metal band, but on their EP Stream of Solidarity from 93, they just turned into like this brutal atheist kind of band, and they were just absolutely wacky, doing all sorts of weird sounds with the guitar. So I'd, I'd, I'm all instantly drawn to like stuff like that. Um, there's a band called Time Ghoul, who uh, a pretty big influence on us yeah uh, just because they're kind of weird and never necessarily got popular in their day so it's pretty cool and like a unique sound and they were just doing what they wanted um they kind of uh went out there in regards of pushing their own uh like stories within the, the lyrics and stuff like that yeah when i discovered time gold my my head was just blown off. I'm like, whoa! So I remember I was just googling like, I don't know, weird death metal bands, sci-fi death metal bands, and this and this time goal came up. And I remember walking home from work and I just put it on. I was like, this is this is really good. Yeah, like time goal's idea of like using stories and atmosphere was like a big influence on on the R I think because prior it was it was mainly about. You know, the songs were a lot short. It was much more about, like, individual riffs. Yeah. But Time Ball just have a, an overall vibe and atmosphere, and, and that was something that we wanted to sort of bring into all that stuff. Well, I guess, um, especially Morbid Angel, um, the Steve Tucker era, so mm. the formulas record through to Heretic, uh, that was pretty influential when it came to change well just write in the next record yeah um, it just gave us a lot of motivation a band called Mifas from the uk they're pretty out there in regards of pushing themselves um performance wise atmosphere as well atmosphere as well they sound pretty similar to Mobile angel they're like kind of not too well known 
Um, and it was kind of like their little hidden gems, other than obviously Megadeth being the best band of all time. Uh, that kind of influenced us. Atheist as well. Not too much, but just think, just more on the premise of those guys really did push themselves as musicians and stuff. So that was pretty yeah. cool. I mean, Atheist was more of an influence on our earlier releases, I think. Yeah. Just trying to do like weird janky stuff, but like visitations is more about the atmosphere rather than you know just doing weird wanky stuff not for the sake of it for to make a good song but um not yeah. turnus obviously turnus not yeah. turnus the, the kings of sci-fi death metal mainly the album cover for thresholds that's the biggest <laughs> yeah, influence yeah. i get yeah that, that album that's pretty yeah. overwhelming right this was pretty sweet the the main ones uh, for me, probably Vector and Revocation. Oh, uh, okay. When I hear Vector, yeah. it was like, oh, oh you, you can do this with music. Oh, all right, all right, cool. You know, like the, the thrash metal mixed with the sci-fi and the atmosphere. And, and then Revocation are really important for me, like, just uh, compositional-wise, because Dave Davidson's like a, a jazz master, and the chords he uses are just... Unheard yeah, of. Any, um, you know, just all bands just stick to like melodic minor or major or a diminished scale or something, but really there's hundreds of like flavors you can use. And, and Revocations really opened me up to that, like guitar playing wise and using different chords and modes. You know, it's, it really is just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit of probably a more of a subtle influence because we kind of aimed more to like a little more underground death metal, a little more atmospheric, but Revocation are like one of the probably one of the biggest uh, like technical death metal bands out there and they're really like modern sounding, but even so I I definitely really uh, inspired by them. Yeah, they're definitely masters of the craft Revocation. Yeah, well I remember when you showed me Revocation for the first time. Like I I, I didn't listen to them and then Brad White yeah, incredible have you ever heard of Revocation. And it showed me the Grip Titans. And fucking ever since then, I've followed them like religiously. Like every single album yeah. they do is just quality. Just yeah. So fucking just good. Just get better and better, I think. Yeah, they really like do. They really line. improve the sound per album, which is like something I always like really respect from bands. Because it's so easy when you, especially when you get to like replication sides, to just yeah. get complacent and go, uh, people will just listen to it anyway. And the fact that they, they constantly and constantly, constantly push themselves. Yeah, push yeah. themselves and quite like question, can we do better? I think, I think, mad respect. Yeah, it's, it's really, I'm really happy that every album is great and it has like an, uh, an expansion from and as a guitar player. It's, I think, the revocation is sort of enhanced because it's into like the melodies and the chords that it make. You know, like, I don't understand it completely, but it makes me intrigued and I'm like, how do you do that? How do you do that? You know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. There's always something engaging about them. Yeah. So what about like um so obviously when lockdown is finally up, whenever that will be, do you have like any bands that you you know you have a dream tour with? Like is there any bands in particular that you've wanted to play with for a long time? Mm -hmm. uh, well like we've played a few shows with Ivod, but like a full tour would be really nice. Um, Nocturnus, now that they've returned, that'd be really cool. Their new record's phenomenal. Um, I guess it's more just about us playing and we'll kind of talk with anyone at this point because we just want to go out and see how the record is around the world and stuff. I mean, it's, it's real fun for us because right now, like, uh, merchandise and orders are we still doing house or always like worldwide and yeah we got new fans turning out from like everywhere so it's like it's, I, it's I, I'm, I'm more yeah. interested in us getting out and uh playing the record and getting visitation from the saladus uh performed live worldwide hopefully you're gonna play moon belt what's that we're gonna, gonna play moon belt Immolet live. yeah yeah yeah. More, more, yeah, yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. For sure. 
No, no worries whatsoever about that. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we, we get that a lot. We get a lot of people asking, like, oh, you know, can you play it live? It's like, well, how do you think we recorded it? Like, yeah. of course we can play it live. <laughs> no. um, and and that that'll be pretty sweet because um, I don't know if people are going to expect us to play that, but I'm, well, well, we're more, more than ready in a position to do that. I mean, we, yeah. and the, I mean, Moon Belt Immolator is a song in the album's kind of like a, Big exciting part for people. It attracts it attracts people. And, yeah, no, absolutely. And to hear that oh, you're going to play that 25 minute song, you know that'll like probably draw people in. You know, mm. I'd, yeah. de- I'd definitely go like to see that because to I'm fuck it, I was gutted when you know the um the actual like gig got cancelled by early in the year with views on like I fuming. I was like so upset because I was like I'm actually really looking forward to it. I like, on it, it like. It was one of my top gigs for the year. I was like, I'm really looking, looking forward to seeing them. But hopefully 2021 will be better. And, uh, it, like, it up, be yeah. I think you're right, it will be probably springtime. I imagine when gigs come back, so we'll see how the world is then. On the subject of bands and influences and that, who do you think is like a band going at the minute that like really, really like underappreciated like you you listen to them like i wish these guys had more like more like listeners because they're so fucking good like who would you say it hits that for you like who are like so like underappreciated in, in the scene probably yeah. our guitarist of a band separation they're like the best uk band of the past 10 years and yeah, uh, it, it, whenever people yeah. ask like, oh, what are your other favorite bands like from England? And who do you like? And I'm, I'm always like, Separation, that's it really. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. Um, it. Joss is still in Separation, working on like a uh, new material thing. And, and uh, they've been like one of my favorites since the founding. And their, their EP Echoes of Mercy was kind of hinting on some weird and progressive edge so it's really exciting to see what is what um what they'll do and plus joss is in cryptic now so he can bring some of that weirdness to us mm. you know it's kind of funny because um like when we knew joe was gonna leave and stuff it was pretty apparent that there wasn't gonna be too many guitarists in the uk that we wanted to join the band, but we were pretty certain that we wanted Joss to join. And thankfully, the moment we asked him, he was he was interested. So it's good yeah. to to be on board and stuff like that. Because yeah, it's a, it was a big ask. I don't know when the last time we did the the last interview was with you guys. Maybe Joe was still in the band at that point, but I think it might have been last year. Was it yeah, last year? Yeah, it was like towards the end of last year, beginning of this year. But I think Joe had literally just left. I think Joe literally had just left. Uh, I think it was actually a question about it, wasn't it? Like, how did you approach like getting a new member in that? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, Joss is in. It'd be really cool to have him in, yeah. Yeah, separation. Um, in bands. We dig right now. Void Ceremony. Yeah, Void oh, Ceremony yeah. are great. A cool band from... Uh, well, America, they're on the West California side, but uh, they've been going for a little while. But and uh, we've been chatting to Garrett uh, quite a bit since the release of Visitations. We got to know him, and uh, and that that's been really cool. And then his records come out. That's on Twenty Books, been, and uh, that's like kind of weird death metal, and it's it's got a lot of interesting elements to it, and, and the production as well is is like really really yeah. good. So, so yeah we are going to have to wrap this up in a minute but I've got one last question for you guys uh, what did you think about the uh, UFO footage that was released from the Pentagon compelling not compelling I, about time <laughs> it's about time the US government talking about what they know um, I think they've been holding it off a bit too long I think it's a bit upsetting that they did it when the world was in lockdown, so it kind of got... That was definitely tactical. Yeah. 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 I mean, it makes sense to release it from then, doesn't it, at that time? Yeah. I mean, maybe it... I, I don't know. I kind of felt like the US 
Pentagon announcing that the they're aware of UFOs and stuff like that um, would have been more of a big deal. It should have been, yeah. It should have been more yeah. of a big deal. Unfortunately, the media hasn't picked up on it, so it's like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's kind of a question on the back burner. But... A lot of people probably don't even know that they announced that. No. But it kind of is scary because I, I think it means that more announcements are to come. Yeah, what well, they've yeah. yeah, for sure. But like, why now though? You know what I mean? Like after all these this time of covering things up, like what they did with Roswell, and then now they're like, oh yeah, by the way, this you know this is what we've got here. Yeah, it just seems a bit of a weird time to drop it. Like there must be some sort of reason or agenda behind it. I for, I think that that they've slowly been like sat there thinking, going, there's no point like trying to hide this anymore because like I think it it's a it asks most people. It's like a well known. Everyone's like. Yeah, there's definitely aliens. Like, I've never met anyone that said no. And I feel like over time, they're going to slowly be like, yeah, Roswell, you know, shit happened. Yeah. Hey, you know, Area 51, you know. like They'll, they'll slowly start dri- giving us more and more drips of information. Well, the cover-ups that they tried to do for Roswell, they're sounding more bullshit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, but I feel like... Aliens, aliens are inevitable. Yeah. yeah. But the biggest question is, have they visited Earth and are they here? So yeah. um, the, the, the three videos that this, the CIA released, uh, they were already like circulating online. And I think they said they released them just to clear up any confusion of people saying they were fake because they were like different versions of fake videos. Yeah. So they released like official three ones. But the weirdest thing is the, the next announcement that they made, they were saying that they said, oh, yeah, we are in possession of alien craft that are not of this earth and we don't know what it is. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw week. that. How long? Sick, by the way. How, how that shit? You know? I, I reckon that they'll slowly start giving us more and more drips of information. Like, there's there's four undocumented, like, site, like World War Two fighters and World War Two like, pilots sit going, yeah, no, nah, we saw some weird shit in World War II. I mean, like, there's, like, documented cases throughout all of history. That there's there's got to have been some interaction. Like you even look at Renaissance paintings, and in certain Renaissance paintings, there's always like in most of them there's like a little disc in the background, just like having a, having a, having a little bit of a chill. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of you sit there and you think, like there's no way that there isn't any, there hasn't been any interaction. Like yeah, I think between us and aliens. It's too much compelling evidence it's, to suggest that there is. There's there's too much and there's there's too much detail in like a lot of stories like to ju- because if you if you're gonna lie at least make like an a, an easy lie that you can be consistent with but when you you look at a lot of accounts it's so detailed to the point where you're like all right well this guy can't be lying because if he's lying he's a fucking good liar. Do you know what I mean? Like. I think eventually we will. There will be a point where we go. Yeah, fuck it. They exist. We've got loads of the fuck it. Evidence. You know, like back in ancient times, people thought there were gods, you know, coming mm-hmm. down. And then, then like the Middle Ages, you know, it was like, oh, it must be witchcraft, sorcery. And, yeah. and now we're, like, oh, it must be aliens, UFO. So maybe they're all linked. I mean, yeah. I mean, it makes sense to be honest. Like everything that's sort of in the scriptures and stuff of them seeing these really obscure sightings that they can't explain. Like when you put aliens on top of that, it just makes so much more sense. Yeah. Not saying that is concrete, but it's just like it makes more sense than a man in the sky. You know what I mean? I saw a Reddit post of some bloke who he came up with a really good theory um, that the reason why people are the way they are and like how we're how we are and how we look and how we act and stuff is because aliens tampered with our dna when when we were chimps and he one bit of evidence that he he pulled up on it is the fact that humans can have kids with every any other human that i mean like everything like you can we can have kids with anyone right so the like it there's not a lot of species that can do that. He's got a full, I have to send you the, the full on Reddit post because he proper deep dives. Like he even goes into like how our muscle fibers grow compared to other primates. And now like in evolution, yeah, it is possible, but it'd probably take way longer 
than what it, we think our evolution started at. And it, I was like, I was reading it, I was like, it took me, it took me a fucking, it was a good fucking hour read because I had to read over it a couple of times because I was like, right, this fucking guy is proper fucking deep dive into it. Mm, it literally is is thought of literally every argument and like this is why I think we our, our DNA got tampered by aliens. Yeah. Well, that same feeling of like mystery and unexplained and intrigue that you get from aliens is the same vibe that we want to give people when they put on our record. Yeah, exactly. You do give yeah. you do give that exactly. vibe and you, you do it really well. Um you you're easily one of one of my favourite bands. Like I have to say, like genuinely, I am a big fan. Like where I do, I, I do genuinely enjoy the stuff that you put out, and the fact that I'm doing this interview with you is like massive, like pro- pretty great for me because I was like, this is fucking sick. Um, just genuinely, the new album and everything you've done before um, is so well put together, and I can't wait to hear what you you come out with next. Yeah, likewise. But yeah, I'm thank working. you. Yeah, thank you very much, guys, for doing this anyway. Um, hopefully, we'll get you back on again and uh, we'll have for as much issues with teams next time. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah we'll um, we'd love to get you guys back on and can't wait to see you guys perform the new songs live as well. Oh, that's much fun. Yeah. yeah. All right, cheers, see you guys. guys. Thank see you. you. In a bit. This is best. See ya. <laughs>